Iran reportedly managed to penetrate Israel's Iron Dome and Aero missile defense systems using the Fata-2 missile, which is equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle capable of reaching speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 20, up to 17,900 kilometers per hour or roughly 10,000 miles per hour. At such extreme speeds, the missile leaves air defense systems like Iron Dome, Aero, and David's sling with very little time to detect, track, and engage the threat, making interception efforts exceptionally difficult. This is how it works. The Fata-2 missile launches with a solid fuel booster that pushes it to hypersonic speeds, reportedly over Mach 15, as it climbs to high altitudes. Once it reaches the edge of the atmosphere, the booster separates and the glide vehicle, carrying the warhead, begins its independent flight. Re-entering the atmosphere at extreme speed, the glide vehicle uses its aerodynamic design and a small liquid fuel engine to maneuver unpredictably, typically flying between 12 and 30 kilometers above the ground. As it approaches the target, it drops to a lower altitude and performs sharp evasive maneuvers at speeds above Mach 5. This combination of speed, agility, and a shifting flight path makes it incredibly hard for air defenses to track or intercept. What sets the Fata-2 apart from conventional ballistic missiles is its ability to maneuver during flight. While traditional missiles follow predictable parabolic trajectories, the Fata-2 breaks from this pattern. It uses aerodynamic control surfaces and a movable nozzle powered by hydrazine fuel to adjust its course while gliding through the atmosphere. This is the reason you see the dragon tail all over Israeli sky. These continuous and unpredictable trajectory changes make the missile extremely difficult to track. Its erratic flight path confuses radar systems and overwhelms targeting algorithms that are designed to handle more conventional, stable trajectories. At the core of its propulsion system is a spherical solid fuel engine with a movable nozzle, which allows for precise steering and controlled acceleration during re-entry. This gives the missile the agility to dodge interception attempts more effectively. The warhead mounted on a maneuverable re-entry vehicle can further alter its path in the final phase of flight complicating interception even more and reducing the chances of a successful defense. Iranian officials have claimed that the Fata-2 also features radar evading capabilities, hinting at possible stealth or low observable technologies. Iran has also asserted that the Fata-2 has already penetrated Israeli air defenses and struck high-value targets including military intelligence facilities and the Israeli air defense headquarters in Tel Aviv. For context, the earlier Fata-1 missile is a two-stage, solid-propellant weapon equipped with a maneuverable re-entry vehicle capable of mid-course adjustments and independent flight. Its warhead includes thrust vector control, allowing it to execute evasive maneuvers during both the mid-course and terminal phases of flight, sometimes as close as 100 kilometers from the target. One of Israel's major disadvantages is its small size. In terms of land area, Israel is roughly 75 times smaller than Iran, making Iran about 7,400% larger. This stark contrast highlights just how compact Israel is by comparison. Because of its limited size, virtually any missile launched toward Israel can reach its target within minutes. This drastically reduces the time available for detection, warning, or evacuation. Geographically, Israel stretches about 470 kilometers, this is around 290 miles from north to south, but at its narrowest point it's only around 15 kilometers, which is 9 miles wide, with a maximum width of about 135 kilometers, this is around 84 miles. Because of Iran's larger size, it can hide its stockpiles of missiles all over the place, and this makes it harder for Israel to destroy every missile storage. Let's take a look at why the Iron Dome failed to intercept the Iranian ballistic missiles. Apart from discussing the multi-layered missile defense system, the Iron Dome itself has a range of around 40 miles, while the David's Sling can intercept ballistic missiles up to a range of 180 miles. The top-tier Aero anti-ballistic missile systems can target threats up to 1,500 miles away. After analyzing every Iranian ballistic salvo, we realized the Iranian would fire around 100 missiles mixed with drones and cruise missile to overwhelm the Israeli air defense systems. They are then followed by these FATA missiles. Although the Aero missile defense system successfully intercepted many missiles before they reached Israel, many still got through. The main problem behind the failure to intercept was after the detachment of the glide vehicle from the launcher. The glide vehicle can change its trajectory multiple times, which confuse the aero missiles. 
This maneuver also bypassed the David's sling and finally the Iron Dome system, which is not designed to counter hypersonic missiles like the FATA-2 model. These missiles were launched from Iranian territory, likely from areas around Tehran and other strategic missile bases, targeting multiple Israeli military installations and urban centers such as Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. To achieve this, Iran deployed hypersonic missiles attack on Israel, launching approximately 100 ballistic missiles and drones, including hypersonic variants and many salvos. This was a retaliatory strike following Israel's massive airstrikes on Iranian nuclear and military sites. Assuming the IDF intercepted 90% of the projectiles, even if just 10 managed to get through, the damage could still be devastating. A single ballistic missile warhead has the potential to destroy an entire city block, as we've seen in past strikes on Tel Aviv. The missile has a range of around 1,500 kilometers, only slightly more than its predecessor, the FATA-1. What sets it apart from other ballistic missiles is its ability to accelerate outside the Earth's atmosphere, while its aerodynamic control surfaces enable steering to evades the famous Aero Missiles Defense System made by Israel. To give you a broader picture, let's look at other countries' hypersonic missile. Hypersonic missiles are a challenging technology to master because they are so fast that if the U.S. launched a scramjet missile, it could reach China in just 18 minutes, traveling at speeds of Mach 5 and above. These scramjet engines collect oxygen from the atmosphere as they travel, mixing it with hydrogen fuel to create the combustion needed for hypersonic flight. Meanwhile, glide hypersonic vehicles like the Chinese Dongfeng-17 became the first to integrate into production with conventional and nuclear warheads. They are also designed to target U.S. aircraft carriers, as they can change their trajectory mid-flight. This U.S. Aero AGM hypersonic weapon is a missile within a missile which pops out its cover and uses only the glide vehicle kinetic energy as a weapon, and not to forget the Russian hypersonic missile like the Kinzel. To qualify as a hypersonic missile, it must possess three key attributes, speed, maneuverability, and accuracy. Let's look at speed. As we all know, Mach 1 represents the speed of sound, which serves as our benchmark. To better understand this, let's make a few comparisons. Commercial airliners, for example, fly subsonically, just below Mach 1. In contrast, modern fighter jets can travel supersonically, reaching speeds of Mach 2 or 3. When we refer to hypersonic speeds, we're talking about anything Mach 5 and above. Space shuttles are an example of vehicles that travel hypersonically, often reaching speeds between Mach 20 and 24. But these can travel only for short distances at these speed. Israel achieved air superiority over Iran, but this does not mean it had taken over ground operations. Iran continues to fire missiles at Israel. This resilience is largely due to Iran's status as one of the most powerful military forces in the Middle East. Over the years, Iran has developed a missile doctrine centered on dispersal and survivability. Its launchers are often mobile, concealed, or housed in hardened facilities, making it extremely difficult for Israeli strikes to neutralize all launch capabilities quickly. This built-in redundancy ensures that even after heavy bombardment, some missile systems remain operational. Prior to the latest conflict, Iran was believed to possess one of the largest ballistic missile arsenals in the region, with estimates ranging from 2,000 to over 3,000 missiles capable of reaching Israeli territory. Even after launching hundreds of missiles and suffering significant damage to its launch infrastructure, Iran is still thought to retain a substantial stockpile, possibly between 300 and 1,300 medium-range ballistic missiles, posing an ongoing threat to Israeli security. A single ballistic missile warhead has the potential to destroy an entire city block, as we've seen in past strikes on Tel Aviv. One of their most effective strategies is the use of mobile missile and drone launchers. Instead of relying on fixed launch sites that can be easily targeted, they mount short-range ballistic missiles and drones on trucks, allowing them to fire and relocate quickly before being detected. This approach makes preemptive strikes far more difficult and reduces the effectiveness of traditional air campaigns. Their weapon stockpiles are also scattered across rugged terrain rather than concentrated in a few locations. By decentralizing their arsenals, they minimize the damage of large-scale bombing raids and ensure they always have access to weapons, even after repeated attacks. Let's examine the cost implications of a single day of missile attacks. Iran expended over $200 million by launching ballistic missiles along with drones, whereas the IDF spent $1 billion to defend itself. 
This includes the Aero missile, which costs around $2.5 million. The David Sling costs around $1 million to produce, while the Iron Dome costs around $20,000 to $100,000 for a single missile, depending on inflation. By contrast, Iranian ballistic missiles cost around $200,000 each, and its drones only $20,000 to $50,000 each. We also make original engineering content, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.